lecture is on solving first order systems. At the conclusion of this lecture, students should be able to determine the Thevenin resistance seen by the inductor or capacitor, find the time constant and static gain of an electrical system using circuit analysis techniques. These are the same first order circuits that we examined in the last lecture, but we're now going to actually analyze the circuit in order to derive the governing differential equation. We will solve the first order differential equations using natural and forced responses. Recall that the natural response is the response of the circuit due to the energy stored in the inductor or capacitor, and the forced response is the response due to an energy source such as a voltage source or a current source. In the prior lecture, we derived the governing differential equation for RC and RL circuits by writing the equation in standard form, and it's possible to identify the static gain and time constant by comparing it to the governing differential equation. An alternate approach is to find the time constant for RC circuits by using the formula tau equals R Thevenin times C, where R Thevenin is the Thevenin equivalent resistance seen by the capacitor. Remember, you must have all of the independent sources turned off in order to find the Thevenin equivalent resistance. The way that we turn off a voltage source is by replacing it with a short circuit, which would represent zero volts. And the way that we turn off a current source is by replacing it with an open circuit because that would represent zero amps. In order to find the Thevenin equivalent resistance seen by an inductor, it's the same approach, except now the time constant is tau is equal to L over R Thevenin. The steady state value when the input is a DC source would be X of T equal to A U of T by K equal to the output as time approaches infinity over the input as time approaches infinity. Another way to write this equation would be Y of infinity over x of infinity. Recall that u of t is a step function. So u of t is equal to 0 when t is less than 0 and 1 when t is greater than or equal to 0. It's called a step function because if you created the graph, it looks like a step with an amplitude of 1. Therefore, if you have a u of t, that represents a step with an amplitude of A. If you think about this in terms of switches or turning a source on and off, what this graph represents is when the source is off and when the source turns on. Where A, the amplitude would be the value of a voltage source or a current source. So now let's do some examples of finding the time constant and static cane for an electric circuit without deriving the governing differential equation first. So remember, since this is an RC circuit, the first thing we're going to find is tau. Tau is equal to R Thevenin times C. So you find the Thevenin equivalent resistance seen by the capacitor. Recall from your circuits courses that to find the Thevenin equivalent resistance, you turn off independent sources. So the first thing that happens is the voltage source becomes a short and I redraw the circuit. Here's our A, here's the capacitor, and here's our B. So what the capacitor would see is that these two resistors are tied at the top and at the bottom. So the capacitor sees these two resistors in parallel. So our Thevenin would be our A in parallel with our B. So tau would be equal to, remember, resistors in parallel is just the product over the sum would be Ra times Rb over Ra plus Rb times the capacitance. Now, to find the static gain, you redraw the circuit under DC conditions, and you look for K is equal to Vc of infinity over Vs of infinity. So when I redraw the circuit under DC conditions, remember the capacitor looks like an open circuit under DC conditions. So I have the voltage source Vs of infinity. I have the resistor Ra. I have the resistor Rb. And I represent the voltage where the capacitor was as an open Vc of infinity. This is actually the voltage divider. 
If k is equal to Vc of infinity over Vs of infinity, then using the voltage divider, I know that this voltage should be Rb over Ra plus Rb. And if you recall from lecture 1-1, these are the same values we got for the static gain and the time constant. All right, let's try another one. Determine the time constant and static gain for the following RL circuit. So once again, we're going to find the Thevenin equivalent resistance seen by the inductor. So tau is equal to L over R Thevenin. So I turn off the voltage source, and I have a resistor RA, the inductor L, and the resistor RB. Just like before, the Thevenin equivalence resistance seen by the inductor is RA in parallel with RB or RA RB over RA plus RB. So tau would be equal to L times the quantity RA plus RB divided by the product RA times RB. Now we redraw the circuit under DC conditions in order to find K. And this time, the output is IL of infinity, the current through the inductor, divided by VS of infinity, the steady state value of the source. So remember, under DC conditions, an inductor looks like a short. So I'm going to have VS of infinity as the input, the resistor RA, the resistor RB, and the inductor. This time, something very interesting happens to RB. Because under DC conditions, an inductor looks like a short circuit, it shorts out RB, which means that in the analysis to find the static gain, it's gone. So the static gain K would be IL of infinity. Now that RB is gone, IL of infinity is actually the same as the current through RA, so K would be equal to IL of infinity over VS of infinity, which is equal to 1 over RA. All right, let's try another example. This is an RC circuit again, but now it has a current source instead of a voltage source. Determine the time constant and static gain for the following circuit without deriving the governing differential equation. We're going to find tau first. Remember tau is equal to R Thevenin times C. And to find R Thevenin, we turn off the sources. So there's only one current source, we turn that off. And we're going to have R A in parallel with C in parallel with R B. So once again, R Thevenin is equal to R A times R B over Ra plus Rb, so tau would be equal to Ra times Rb times C over Ra plus Rb. Now we need to analyze the circuit under steady state or DC conditions in order to find K. So under DC conditions, the capacitor becomes an open circuit. So we're going to have the current source, Is of infinity, the first resistor Ra, the capacitor represented as an open circuit, the voltage across it, Vc of infinity, in parallel with another resistor, which is Rb. We can actually simplify this circuit to be a current source, Is of infinity, the equivalent resistance, Ra in parallel with Rb, and the voltage across that as Vc of infinity. So K, equal to the output Vc of infinity over the input Is of infinity, that relationship is Ohm's law, is equal to Ra in parallel with Rb, or the gain is Ra times Rb over Ra plus Rb. As we discussed in lecture 1-1, the solution, solution to a first order differential equation can be decomposed into the natural and the force response, where the natural response is due to initial conditions such as the charge voltage on the capacitor or the stored current through the inductor, and the force response is due to the application of a DC source. 
To find the natural response, assume that the input to the system is zero, x of t equals zero. And as we've discussed before, the natural response has the form of an exponentially increasing or decreasing function. So y n of t would be equal to c e r t. So putting this in the differential equation that we had before, we have tau y dot n of t plus y n of t equals zero. We find the derivative of the natural response and you have tau r c e to the r t plus c e to the r t equals zero. So now if we factor out c e to the r t, we have c e to the r t times tau r plus one, which equals zero. And in order for that to be zero, r must be equal to negative one over tau. Recall that tau is equal to r thevenin times c, or l over r thevenin, depending upon whether we have an r c or r l circuit. So we have that the natural response must have the form c e equals negative t over tau. The force response is due to an applied constant DC source. So that would have the form X of T equals A U of T. Remember that represented a step function that was turning on and it has a constant value, which is a voltage or current of A. So that means that the force response would be tau YF dot of T plus YF of T equals KX of T. Now you know that the derivative of a constant is zero. So this simplifies to y f of t equals k a. Therefore, the complete solution would be y of t equal to the force response k a plus the natural response c e to the negative t over tau. To determine the constant c, you have to use initial or final conditions. So for example, y of t naught would be equal to k a plus c e to the negative t naught over tau. So C would be equal to E to the T naught over tau times the quantity Y of T naught minus KA. That's a general form for the solution for a first order differential equation due to a step response would be Y of T is equal to KA plus Y of T naught minus KA E to the negative T minus T naught over tau. If we're assuming that we're analyzing the circuit at time zero, then T naught would be equal to zero. And if we're assuming that it's as time approaches infinity, this equation simplifies to y of t is equal to y of infinity plus the quantity y of zero plus minus y of infinity e to the negative t over tau. We will use both of these equations in class. Recall that the time constant indicates how fast the system responds. The following table and figures show the first order step response for a system with zero initial conditions. And recall that within time, for time constants, it will be within 2% of its final value, and within five time constants, it will be within 1% of its final value. The following graph shows an example of the step response for a first order circuit, where y of zero plus is equal to zero. I always like to go through this demonstration once in class, because sometimes students forget why the four time constants and the five time constants works. So for example, if you're at time zero and you're using this equation, y of zero would be equal to y of infinity times one minus e to the zero. Since e to the zero is one, at time zero, the graph should be at zero, and it is. And one time constant, it would be y of infinity times one minus e to the negative one which is equal to 0.632 y of infinity. So that means within one time constant, it should be 63% of the way to its final value. And two time constants, you would have one of infinity times one minus e to the negative two, which is equal to 0.865 y of infinity. And three time constants, it's one y of infinity times one minus e to the negative three, which is 0 0.95 y of infinity. So that means that within three time constants, it should be at about 95% of the way to its final value. And then the ones we use the most in class, which are four time constants and five time constants, within four time constants, it's y of infinity times one minus e to the negative four, or 0 0.982, y of infinity, which means it's within 2% of its final value. And finally, five tau is y of infinity times one minus e to the negative five, or 
0 0.993 y of infinity, so it should be within 1% of its final value within five time constants. A first order system with an initial value y of one is equal to zero is described by the following differential equation. What is the output y of t for x of t equals two u of t? So we now know that two u of t represents our a u of t. So for our analysis, a is equal to two and the initial value y of t naught is equal to zero. So in our case, t naught is equal to one. So the first thing we want to do is to rewrite this equation to be in our governing differential equation form, which means we want the constant in, on y of t to be a one. So we're gonna divide both sides of this equation by two. And you have two y dot of t plus y of t equals eight x of t. So now comparing this to our governing differential equation, we had tau y dot of t plus y of t equals k x of t. So tau is equal to two. And k is equal to eight. So if we want to now write the general form of the equation we derived on the prior page, y of t is equal to k a plus y of t naught which is y of one minus k a e to the negative t minus t naught or t minus one over tau. So putting in the values that we have here, k times a is going to be 16 plus y of t naught, which is a zero minus 16 e to the negative quantity t minus one over two so finally, we can write this as y of t is equal to 16 times the quantity one minus e to the negative t minus one over two. All right, let's look at the final example from today's lecture. A first order system with y of zero plus is equal to one is described by the following differential equation. What is the output y of t for x of t equal u of t? So since y of zero plus is equal to one, we know that t naught is equal to zero and y of t naught is equal to one. And since x of t equals u of t, which is our input a u of t, we know that a is equal to one. Now, comparing this equation to our standard differential equation, we need to get a coefficient of one on y of t. So I'm gonna rewrite this as one half y dot of t plus y of t equals three halves x of t. So when I do that, I know that tau is equal to one half and k is equal to three halves. So now we have all of the information we need in order to write the standard governing differential equation. So we have y of t is equal to ka plus y of t naught minus ka e to the negative t minus t naught over tau. So when we substitute in our values, k times a, we have three half times one, so that's three halves, plus y of zero plus, which is a one, so that's one minus three halves. e to the negative t minus t naught is negative t minus zero over three halves. So finally, when we simplify this equation, we get that y of t is equal to three halves minus one half e to the negative two thirds t.